Now this song, Sweet Mother, here's the interesting thing, is known as the best selling song in African music history in Africa. It is a huge hit, but how is it possible that a song is best selling if it's not making any money? Make this make sense. Joining me right now on Arise 360 from our Lagos studios, Otto Njama III, the filmmaker behind the documentary based off Nico Ngama's hit single, Sweet Mother. Thanks for joining me today on the show. So I would like to, you know, before we take a look at the big issues, soften the ground a little. Tell me about your mother. I want to know that. <laughs> Okay, my mom's, uh, my mom's called Rosemary uh, Asun Jama. She's the sweetest mother. I mean, everybody's mom is the sweetest, to be honest. Um, but I think mine is extra, extra, extra sweet. Um, the early part of my career when I was having log ahead with, you know, um, you know that thing when sometimes parents, your dad doesn't catch the vision on time. The mom always catch your vision on time. Like your mom gets to, they're always there to support your career from the early age when it's just you that, see, that sees the clear picture. Uh, she was there, but of course, eventually my dad came around and um, he actually supported my um, film journey. So um, whenever I think, whenever I listen to that song, it takes me back to that early stage where, you know, I, had, I was, I was um, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I, I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a filmmaker, but trying to convince my, my dad that, look, this is the part I want to take as against what he pre, um, the idea he pre had, uh, he pre the, the career he thought I was going to, I was going to carry on. So. Um, I mean, that and some other personal struggles, which I want to believe everyone, everyone's got their own personal struggles. 100%. You know, so whenever I listen to that song, yeah, so whenever I listen to that song, it just um, takes my mind back to that era. Absolutely. I, I she's, mean, a, she's a beautiful soul. You know? <laughs> yeah, my mom's name is Dr. Jackie, you know. And interestingly, I, it was, I was okay. the problem. It wasn't even, you know, my parents. I wanted to be a doctor. You know, I was like, no, I'm going to study medicine. I'm going to be a medical doctor. And she always told me, Kachi, you talk too much. You just cannot be serious about this. Think about it. And I used to fight her about that. But I'm so happy that, you know, she kind of helped me see the light, you know, as to what I was supposed to be doing with my life. But enough about that. Let us not talk about this hit song. Like I said, as I introduced you, it is known as the best-selling song, right? But where's the money? I saw the trailer for that documentary and I was really, really heartbroken when his son spoke about that incident that happened in his school where his lecturer asked him, what are you doing in a federal university? 13 million copies. That is no joke. So that, that part of the documentary is one of the most emotional for me. Um, I think the question we asked him was, which was the most emotional day of your life. So he went ahead to tell us that story of the lecturer asking him, well, come here, what's your name? And he said, Nikon Baga. I said, that's not true. You can't be Nikon Baga's son. What are you doing in a, in a, in a public school? Um, and he, I mean, a few moments after that, he actually cried. He was filming that documentary was a, an emotional roller coaster for me and the crew. But I think it's something that needed to be done. Um, just to a little bit of correction, Sweet Mother, the song, was Africa or is Africa's highest selling record of all time. Record, hard copies, not streams. Because, I mean, people like, um, um, songs like Love Wants Inti has broken those records, but those are when you talk about, or that's for streams, for online streams. But if you take your mind back to 1976, I mean, there, were, there was no social media. Um, all the advantages that makes today's music travel like Wi-Fi were not in existence, you know. So imagine someone from a very, from a song that was turned down by two record labels, Decca, Repo, De Decca Records turned it down because they thought the song was too childish. Um, another one I can't remember, equally turned it down. And um, out of nowhere, um, Rogers took it up and the song became and a global monster hit, selling over 13 million official copies. Experts say that song may have sold over three times that number, maybe 15 million copies worldwide. Uh, I remember, um, I mean, of, of course, in the course of my documentary, we had to do extensive research, and we, we realized the song was actually in the UK top 10. And it wasn't just because it was some exotic music that the whites wanted. No, it had, the song had crossover appeal. like. Um, Every, in the 70s, the song was a social status symbol. Owning a copy of the Sweet Mother um, collection, the Sweet Mother record, was a social status symbol. Like, you know, you can, if you walk into someone's house and they don't have that collection, it looks like they're not, they're not it, you know? So it was, a, it was a big deal. And I actually think, um, or I actually know, 
of course, from research again, that Sweet Mother was one of the highest selling records in the 70s. Sorry, it was actually the most expensive record in the 70s, selling for an, an average of $60, an estimate of $60 back in the time. So yes, it was a really big deal. All right, so based off of the, the analysis that you've given, you know, I'm glad that you differentiated between selling hard copy records and streaming. Um, obviously, right now, no one is really doing hard copy sales. Most people make their money off streaming platforms. So I've, looking at that trailer, I could tell the financial gains of the song was a huge part that you chose to focus on. So if I'm picking up what you're saying, you are basically, in essence, saying that the money, the song did make money, but maybe it was not just sufficient enough. So why did you choose to focus on that angle? Because apart from his son, who spoke about the finances, um, VJ Adams also mentioned it, the part where he said, you know, even one million alone is a big deal right now. And then another person in the documentary, I, I missed his name, spoke on how if he was making one dollar or one thousand hour for each copy, 13 million is a lot. So I just want to get what the angle is. Are you saying that, you know, he should have made more money and somebody is ripping him off? Or are you saying, well, he did make money, no one ripped him off, but he could have made more money? What exactly are you sending out there? Okay, so first of all, the whole idea of telling this story was to um, bring to people's consciousness the man who gave us Africa's biggest song. Um, Nickenbagger died tragically in 1997, 25 years ago. Um, whereas, um, even though he's dead, his music still continues to, his music is still relevant. It's um, actually, the unofficial Mother's Day anthem. So every year, there's like two or three Mother's Day a year, and all through the Mother's Day, Sweet Mother's the song everybody plays, on your Mother's birthday, the song everybody plays. Uh, so we remember the song, we all know the song, but not so many people remember the name Nico Mbaga. So we thought, look, we need to tell Nico Mbaga's story. You cannot be the man who made Africa's most popular song. I think the song was voted BBC's, um, the song was voted Africa's favorite song by BBC listeners in 2004. Uh, you can't be someone who made that song and your name is forgotten in history. So for us, first of all, the first thing was to make sure we tell Nico Mbaga's story. Now, in the course of our research and our documentary, of course, you saw clips of his wife, his kids, and um, his best friend, Mr. Ojong, talking to us. Um, I had access to Nico Mbaga's personal briefcase. Um, so a little bit of backstory. When Nico Mbaga died tragically, his wife was devastated. She was like, I have nothing to do with music. She almost totally pushed everything Nico Mbaga to the side and he wouldn't blame her. Um, so she, she, she had no idea that Nico's contract for the, for the deal, the, 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 the contract he had with Rogers All Stars was actually in his briefcase. In the course of my documentary, we had access to the briefcase. And for the first time in a very long time, we did saw the official contract which Nico Mbaga signed with Rogers All Stars. And um, he was entitled to 25% of each record sale which is um, a lot of money. But, I mean, I wasn't there when that deal was signed. I'm only talking based on what I was told, the documentary, the, the interview with his wife, his kids, his best friend, and of course his lawyer. Um, but, I mean, it's not, it's not even, it's not private knowledge, it's public knowledge, it's in public domain. While Nico was alive, he alleged that Rogers was not paying him um, his rightful royalty. Um, he tried to take Rogers to court. He did institute a legal case against Rogers All Stars, but somehow he was talked out of it. Um, there was a little bit of, there was, there was some back and forth, back and forth. Um, he didn't have much of the evidences, right? But he was trying to gather evidence. Um, sadly, he got involved in a tragic motor accident and died, right? So um, 25 years after, very little has been done about the justice that Nico actually deserves. And um, it's interesting so you mentioned us, this. the Sweet Mother Project. Because if you go on your Apple Music, your us, you know, um, streaming platforms, you will see Sweet Mother there. So people are streaming the song, even till today. People might not be buying the physical copy, but the song is under Rogers All Stars when you try to find it. So what you're basically saying in essence is, for every time somebody listens to that song on Apple Music, for every dollar that is made, 25% is meant to be going to his family, but apparently it's not going there. Contractually, yes, according to the contract we saw. Um, so there's, there's different angles to the Sweet Mother Project. There's the legal aspect which the lawyers are handling and they're currently um, carrying out their investigations. I'm not, I'm not, um, I can't divulge, I can't give up much information about that part. Um, but yes, uh, contractually, Nico was entitled to 25% of each record sale. 
and 50% um, publishing according to the contract. All right, so uh, we've got to wrap this up real quick. But before I let you go today, Otu, first of all, big, 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 big congratulations on the work that you're doing uh, with this Sweet Mother project in total. So when can we see this official documentary released? And hopefully, you know, the legal case comes out positive because it's just heartbreaking to know that for an artist that has delivered such a beautiful track that even I myself, I know that I used it recently, he is not getting the returns that he deserves. So when can we expect the full documentary? Okay, the documentary will be available on some streaming platforms. Um, so there's an event coming up on the 11th of August. It's called An Evening with Nico Mbaga. Um, as a result of, from what I've said all through, we thought, you know what, um, the best way to immortalize Nico Mbaga is to institute what we call Sweet Mother Festival, which is going to be a yearly event to remember the man who gave us Africa's biggest song. Now, as a prelude to that event, we actually have something much smaller for this year called An Evening with Nico Mbaga. It's a 25th anniversary night of tribute for Nico Mbaga, and um, it's going to be at CCX. How amazing Kufa that's Bayomi going to be, and Victoria I hope Island that it Hunt. turns out to be amazing. You know, I'm sure like on your social media platforms, you know, uh, people will be able to find more details about the evening with Prince Nico Mbaga. But Otu, I've got to say a big thank you for joining me on Arise360 today. I totally enjoyed this conversation.